cannot wait to present to you this unique episode that really brings true and deep in my heart. Guru Ganesha Singh, founder of Spirit Voyage Records, is a musician whose sacred music has touched over 30 million listeners worldwide. His uplifting blend of mantra and melody continues to inspire and heal through collaborations with artists like Sanatam Kar. Sometimes people come and they want me to be their teacher. I say, no, 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 no. Right. Dead end. Dead end. Right. The teacher right. is in you. And this episode really means so much to me because I am honored to call him also my spiritual uncle. So let's dive into it. In recently that you and the band have been doing some show and performance. So could you share with us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, we're having a lot of fun and uh, uh, adding some new material. And we've uh, gotten into doing some old classics, you know. Yeah. There were some great songs that have already been written, you know. Yeah. And uh, while my guitar gently weeps, we've started doing and then added the Hare Krishna mantra at the end. Wow. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, oh, there's a beautiful song that Mirabai Seba did called Ocean. Right. And, uh, the ocean refuses no rivers. And right. uh, that's the first line. And it also ends with the mantra. We really enjoy, uh, you know, doing a, uh, doing a song and then adding a mantra at the end, just to take people into a, a kind of a deep meditative space. And Absolutely. I perhaps have mentioned this before. And if I may, I would like to mention again, when I was like shuffling your playlist, I believe on YouTube Music or Spotify, and then there's this uh, song, I believe it was recorded live. It's like in the light of my soul together with another song together. And well, what that, you won't do for love, which yes. is a Bobby Caldwell cover. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's just absolutely incredible because um, exactly like what you're saying, right? It's like a song that is already so classic. And everybody feel the energy and want to move with it. And um, they're singing together. And then with mantra or um, some reminder of like um, you and me and God are one um, phrase like this really just so powerful and amazing. So Just trying to remind us all that joy is an important part of life and Yes, and that absolutely. really, at, at the core, we're all just love. Yeah. You know, we want to we want to give love and receive love, and uh, you know, sometimes yes. we get derailed into other things. You know, arguing with each other on Twitter or TikTok. <sighs> or, <laughs> Yes, 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 fair enough. I mean, I mean, however, that's also perhaps that's uh, what it means of being human, of feeling the highs and lows. And one thing that showed up to me already during this conversation, which is, Guru Ganesha, I want to acknowledge you that you always, on stage, off stage, in person, online, you always bring so much presence and also this energy of joy um that's always coming from your heart and even now we're doing this conversation through the screen but however i feel that so i actually have a question about joy because the first thing you mentioned is uh you're saying that you and the squad the band everybody's having so much fun and i really think that's totally awesome my question is that how did you or do you have any advice to all the young audience out there or even including myself about finding your dharma or your work connect that so deeply with joy? You know, I think it comes from true collaboration and uh, seeing others as equals and knowing that everybody has this incredible wisdom within. And uh, I, I just keep reminding people that they're already pure, they are already perfect. They don't have to work so hard. 
Yeah. Try to attain something, you know. You're yeah. already it. Just relax and enjoy you. And, uh, you know, give a lot of love. Allow yourself to be loved. And, uh, you know, you have to have boundaries, too. Some people are more in the, in a, 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 just at this point in time and space in a bit of the negative energy. And so you need to protect yourself. But there's a certain point where you get so strong in your own core that uh, you can be with anybody and transform that energy. They can't help themselves but to feel the love. And everybody wants to feel that in their heart. Everybody. There's really not a whole lot of difference between us human beings, you know. Yeah. But the mind can go off into some very bizarre places and start to get paranoid and think, oh, you have enemies out there. One time they were asking the Dalai Lama, he was in a press conference, and they, they asked him, why are there so many wars on the planet Earth? And he said this in a very humble way, not an arrogant way. I may have already told you this story. He said, well, there's peace wherever I go. And what he meant was that he's transmitting so much love for all beings. And even people, uh, even if he walked into a war zone, people put their arms down. <laughs> we can't shoot the Dalai Lama. <laughs> And even if they did, he's okay with it because he trusts. He trusts the benevolence at the core of creation. I know people may be skeptical that there's a benevolent force, super intelligence, but I experience it every day in my heart. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of distractions. But if you start your day getting in touch with your heart, which is very easy, beloved nephew, is just remembering that you're breathing and feeling your heart as you breathe. Just breathing into your heart. The more you feel your heart, the more you, you blossom like a flower. That is absolutely fascinating and and i can't I'm... prove any of it you know <laughs> i just encourage people to experience it like right this moment if you happen to be watching this or listening to this just bring your attention to your breath simple as that you don't have to change your breath you don't have to breathe deeper or just bring your attention to your breath and the miracle you're breathing. Now see if you can figure out where the breath is coming from. Where is it coming from? Perhaps from the infinity. And I really believe that the soul, the spirit that animates this physical body is unborn and undying. So you can relax. I think a lot of times people are miserable because they think when, when the physical body dies, that's it. I don't think so. But I can't prove it. <laughs> I don't need to prove it. Yeah, exactly. I just don't believe it. I believe the soul lives forever. And, uh, you know, is an infinite changing of form. Every day you open your eyes. There's some differences, right? One thing is the same. It's you. In the beginning was you. Every day you wake up, it's you. Today it was you. Tomorrow is you. What you see, experience, goes through a lot of twists and turns and shifts. But when you reside in your deep inside your you-ness, your I-ness, your I am, 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 I am. 
and accept, accept, fully accept you, all aspects of you and embrace all aspects of you, even those parts that your judge up here. You know, we all, we all have a judge sitting on the committee. But, uh, you know, perhaps that judge is not as important as we think. Perhaps there's no reason to be judging ourselves, just accepting, accepting. And the parts of you that you judge to be uh, not so good lose their power when you stop judging. Kruganesha, that's absolutely fantastic. Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not <laughs> right yes just so, sharing I, i'm not yes. really into being a teacher i'm just into sometimes people come and they want me to be their teacher i say no 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 right dead right. end dead right. end right the teacher right. is in you yeah you, you all the wisdom of the ages is contained in your own heart so you don't need me I like what Baba Ramda said. We're all just walking each other home. Yes. <laughs> I remember I love that. Quote. Yes. That's <laughs> fantastic. Yes. So Guru Ganesha, when you are sharing that, what is resonating in my heart and showing up to me is that, for example, because these days, people in my life or I'm talking to some of my friends, maybe a little bit younger, they are thinking about something like a career change or changing their environment, moving somewhere overseas. And I see that uh, regardless where they're from, could be Europe, from Spain, we're from China, we're from America, Canada. And to me, it's like the whole planet we are perhaps where I believe that our consciousness is shifting towards a higher level consciousness where people are more and more want to discover more about their true self, right? So they're changing in the environment, whether it's work or relationship, uh, where the place they live, they want to shift to somewhere or some place that they are more aligned. And what you just said to show up to me is that perhaps pick an environment professionally or the place that you live allow you to be as freely as possible to channeling your creative energy and channeling the love from your heart uh, to the world or from your heart to the others and that's probably the best like advice or the um yes and, and you don't you even have a white beard Piazzi. <laughs> But the wisdom is just radiating from you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's important. I gave myself permission to spend my time doing things that I enjoy, that have a deep meaning for me, and that feel like uh, 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 I'm making a contribution to the goodness, to our better angels. and. Also recognizing I have the whole infinity within me, shadow and light. But, you know, uh, chuckling at the shadow and, pursue, you know, moving in the direction of light. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, Ganesha, well, I want to get your take on this. I believe that uh, in Sanskrit, the word se seva means service. And my, I'm super curious to what, hear what you think about this. So my understanding about money is actually that is part of, is something that comes along with the service, right? It depends on how much service that you could bring to the others or potentially to the world and money or material things will come along with that, but that's not the point that's not the end game the focus should be more on the service and the results it's just something that come along with that so what's yeah, your take I on agree that? With that i think doors keep opening when right. you do something that feels good in your heart 
And that's, that's real enjoyment, you know, when your heart feels good about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, the prosperity, which is already there. I mean, let's face it. Have you uh, involuntarily missed a meal at all? And, and if you did, you have so many friends who love you that you could go say, hey, I ran out of money. I haven't had a meal. Could you make me a bowl of oatmeal? Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, as you get to be my age, if there's only one bowl of oatmeal and there's 100 people, I want it all to go to the other 100 people if there's a little left afterwards. And uh, there's so much fulfillment that comes from being a selfless servant of the planet. I don't know, I never really worried about money. It shocks my wife. But then again, it comes from interesting, it just manifests. And I wasn't born into money, you know, my mother had very little money. My father died when I was 17 and, you know, my mother worked hard, but you know, we just got by, we were a middle-class family. And uh, then I started walking the spiritual path and I just noticed when I put myself into seva, seva that I enjoyed, that would lead to the next door would appear and I would know, oh, okay, I should walk through this door now. And then maybe, put yourself fully into what you're doing and then another door appears and you know which one to walk through and which one not to walk through. True. True. Um... And I, I, you know, it's been so nice too to have music as, uh, as something that manifested, you know, it was really a gift. Did I ever tell you the story of how I got my first guitar? No, I believe not yet. So I'm eight years old. In the U.S. back when I was eight, it was 1958. Okay. Wow. And uh, it was television had just been invented. And, you wow. know, my family got the first black and black and white TV on our block. In, in Natick, Massachusetts, 18 miles west of Boston. And everybody in the neighborhood, we invited over to watch TV because everybody was fascinated with a, yeah. you know, moving pictures. They called totally. them, the original totally. movies were called moving pictures, right? True. And then it became movies. Right. And, but on Sunday nights in 19... Late 50s, early 60s was a family variety show called the Ed Sullivan Show. And I think it was 1960. Oh, oh, well, I was telling you how I got my first guitar. So one night we're watching that show in 58. And every now and then they showed the band, the studio band. Mm -hmm. And the guitarist was my cousin. I didn't even know my father would say, that's your cousin, High White. I said, really? That's my cousin? I had never met him in person. So one day my father said, let's take a, get in the car. We'll go and we'll visit our cousin, High White. He lived in New Rochelle, New York. He had done really well. You know, he was a famous guitarist, but not so famous as the big uh, pop stars and so forth. He was of support, you know, right. yeah. and... Uh, so we went to visit him and we sat upstairs and he fed us. And then he said, I have something to show you. He meant me. And we, he brought all of us down into the basement. His basement was beautiful. It's finished everywhere. There were guitars hanging on hooks on the walls. It was all wood paneled and then guitars hanging. He must have had 50, 60 different guitars hanging up. Wow. And my, you know, my eyes just popped out of my head, my jaw dropped. And he said, pick one out. And I didn't quite understand what he meant, but you know, he said, pick one out, pick your favorite guitar. 
I walked all over looking and, and then I pointed up and it was a semi hollow body electric guitar named uh, Gibson, which Gibson. was a famous guitar back then in those days. I think they're still around now too. It was a semi hollow body electric made with this beautiful wood, reddish brown wood. And I pointed at that and he laughs and he says, you would pick my most expensive, magnificent guitar. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, don't be sorry. And he picked, pulled it off the wall, handed it to me. He said, it's yours. Now learn how wow. to play it. So wow. that wasn't a gift from the heavens, you know, from the formless, right. the formlessness, the form. Yes. And on the drive home, my mother said, okay, well, your cousin give you this guitar. You have to learn how to play it now. I said, well, I would love to learn how to play it. She said, I'm going to get you a, a teacher. And she did. And it was a gentleman. I'm not even sure if he's still alive. I did run into him once, uh, maybe uh, when I was about 60, about 15 years ago or so. Uh, his name was George Zacchella. He had emigrated from Italy to the U.S. Wow. He, was, he played classical guitar beautifully, and he was, a, he was a taskmaster. And boy, did he work me hard. You know, these were a half hour a week lessons, but he gave me a lot of homework. <clears throat> so I worked hard on it for about three and a half years. And then I was 11, 12. I started to lose interest in the guitar. And I was much more interested in baseball <laughs> as a boy of 11. <laughs> right, of course. And so finally, I wore my mother down. And after three and a half years of lessons, she said, OK, you can take a break. The guitar went in the closet, but I had learned all the basics. He taught me how to use both hands, all the fingers on both hands. Wow. Even the thumb had purpose if you positioned it right, you know, although right. the thumb isn't very active on the guitar, but yeah. you had to position it correctly. And for a year and a half, I didn't touch the guitar. Then 1963, I was 12 years old now, going up, just about to turn 13. And we're watching the Ed Sullivan show on Sunday night, 8 to 9. Every week we watched it. The neighbors came over. Although now the neighbors had TVs, too, because TVs were taking over the universe, you know. Twilight mm -hmm. Zone, Outer Limits, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan show. Wow. And I was just blown away by the Beatles, a group of four young men playing together. And at the time, they were playing funny songs like She Loves You, Yeah, 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 I Want to Hold Your Hand. But they also had some other more sophisticated songs, although I like the simple ones, too, with the simple mm -hmm. message. Yeah. And But then I noticed, wow, wow the audience with all these beautiful young women screaming. And I, here I am, a young man now of 12, going on 13, starting to feel, you know, uh, uh, adolescence was, was coming on, feeling the hormones. And I look and I go, wow, uh, I have a guitar myself and I know how to play. I know how to play. And I thought, well, maybe that would attract some young ladies in my direction. <laughs> and so I started, I pulled the guitar out of the uh, closet and I started to play. But this time I started to learn some Beatles songs and I started a little band. And called the time, even then I wore, uh, so I didn't have a turban then, you know, I grew up in a, uh, my father was Russian Jewish ancestry. My mother was Irish Catholic. Right. And uh, I, my first band was called the Top Hats, and we wore these big black top hats. I don't know if you've uh -huh. ever seen a top hat. You know, it's like the yeah. president would wear it as inauguration. A big. Top oh, hat. right, 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 right. And then it, it was fun. You know, I I got in for the wrong reasons, but then the music started to take over. And the beauty of collaborating with other people and creating music together. And I, I learned the beauty of teamwork. 
and collaboration where everybody was kind of equal. In my band, even to this day, even though some people say, well, it's called the Guru Ganesha Band. Well, that's only because I was more well-known after playing with Sanatam for uh, 10, 11 years. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it did help us get more gigs. But the band is total equality. We collaborate. We sit. It's very Tao. There is no high, there is no low. In fact, the lower you Indeed. can go, the better off you are. The more you listen to the others, the better everything gets. Exactly. So I learned that wisdom doesn't, uh, you know, and good ideas come from all the minds, not just my mind. And, uh, you know, we're all struggling with that as a human race, uh, is learning how to listen. And even now I'm failing. I'm talking so much. I should be listening to you. It's a great story, Guru Ganesh. I really have, I'm having so much fun hearing it. And Well, stories are important, you know. Indeed. That's how we relate. That's how the audience really enjoy. Because when we're hearing a story, we can picture it. I imagine I was there um, when you are playing the guitar, when you are in the guitar lesson. Um, and sitting in front of TV in your teenage years and looking at and feeling so fascinated about uh, Beatles playing and uh, the reaction at, um, at that time. And that, um, that all to me was a gift, gift indeed. from the, you know, eternal benevolent force. And, and, you know, this is what gets, you know, we're in each other's lives. We inspire each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We touch each other. We uplift each other. And uh, I, I'm optimistic. Despite Indeed. what appears to be evidence to the contrary, I'm very optimistic. I think it's a, a seminal moment now in our history as a human race. And we're about to move into an age where love is the dominant force. And I think a worldwide enduring peace is going to manifest soon. I think the Middle East situation is about to go through a major shift. The, sh the situation in Ukraine and Russia is about to go through a major shift. There's some beautiful things on the horizon. Me too. I believe so as well. And, and I you think... and I are going to help. And your smile is going to inspire other smiles and your goodness is going to inspire more goodness. And uh, we're going we're gonna to listen to each other and try to really understand, sit around the peace table and really listen to each other. And uh, there is a way where there's a will there's a way. And uh, we are the people of peace, people of love, people of consciousness. And uh, so I feel very, very optimistic today. That's fantastic. I feel that as well. And uh, Guru Ganesha, when you were saying that, um, when you are on this path, when you are doing, excuse me, when you are doing one thing, one task or one opportunity, and during that or after that, there's another door of opportunity that would open up, and just suddenly something came up in my mind. Actually, last week, uh, one of my friends she was hosting a small event. Um, painting and uh painting and wine so it was very it was very nice i went there usually I, I don't know why i was there because i'm never really the type of person who paints i went there and uh towards the end of the event um she has a studio and um the neighbor who owns another studio uh she was there outside and they were talking and then i went up and say hi and 
my friend who's the artist, she introduced me to the uh, to her friend, and it turns out that her friend owns the yoga studio next door. And my friend shares with the yoga studio owner saying that, oh, Jazzy is actually um, doing a yoga teacher training now. And she invited me to say that, oh, actually, if you want, you can, can come here and teach a community class and uh, see how people react. Uh, maybe, you know, hopefully they will like it and then you can, you know, be teaching more classes. Um, and And I think, so in that moment, obviously I feel great. Um, I, However, I, this is what I want to share that I think myself and a lot of people out there, and I'm wondering if you have been through this path in the past as well, right? When there's opportunity, I, and I believe it's part of human nature, that sometimes we'll have doubts, right? And even Ram Dass, uh, I listen to a lot of his lecture, he would be saying that, oh, he would think, thinking that, oh, I was such an impure person. If I have an impure thought today, then the next day I want to get on stage and, you know, that people are expecting me to get them off. And, and I have those thoughts as well, right? Because I'm still, uh, I don't, you know, I'm still on the path, on the path, right? So, um, Guru Ganesh, I, I don't, I'm wondering if you had similar experience before or some story and how you overcame it. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we. Oops! Ah, that's funny. I had. Yeah, so good. It's water. A little tea. water spill. Yeah, water yeah, yeah. Oh, so speaker. Good. But, you know, oh. dry. if I have to, we'll get another one, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. Hope the microphones. You can still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All so right. good. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I was going to say that, you know, uh, when I discovered uh, maybe five years ago that the, the gentleman who I, I had embraced as my spiritual teacher <laughs> did not really walk the talk, uh, I, it, you know, for a while it sent me into a dark night of the soul. But it's interesting, you know, how each of us has the infinity. So one minute, he could be sitting on a stage and channeling incredible wisdom that was resonating very mm -hmm. deeply for me. And in a whole other time and space, he was, uh, you know, uh, uh, badly abusing people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we all have to realize that we all have the... Uh, all of that is contained. Whatever anybody out there in the universe is doing, we have the capacity to do the same. That's what the infinity is. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, you take precautions. You know, you understand the law of cause and effect. True. And, I, I, you know, the first ashram I lived in was called Ahimsa. Do you know what the concept of ahimsa means? Actually, no, please tell me. <laughs> it means doing no harm. Uh huh. Doing no harm in thought, word, or deed. And right. it's a principle I've tried to embrace because yeah. I, I recognize that I have the capacity to be evil and to do evil things. But because I've embraced this concept called ahimsa, doing no harm, thought, word, or deed, mm -hmm. whenever my mind goes in the direction of harming others, I remember my, this close embrace of ahimsa mm -hmm. and, and, and the joy that comes from doing my absolute best not to harm another living creature. In India, the, the Jains have a, walk around with a brush so that they can move the insects away without harming the insects. Now, that um, might be an extreme <laughs> interpretation yes. of yes. it. But there's a certain beauty to it, you know? Not wanting to d disrupt any living beings. I think it's be it's one of the reasons I, and I'm not judging people who aren't vegetarians, 
But one of the reasons I became a vegetarian was I didn't want to do any harm to, or have anybody do harm to another living being on my behalf. Uh, but that's my own personal choice. And uh, I, I've really been letting go as much as possible of judging other people. Although if someone is abusing another, uh, and I, I'm in a position to step in, I will step in. And uh, it's not about, you know, t turning away from suffering. Absolutely. It's about helping to alleviate suff suffering. But I'm not necessarily into locking people up forever. <laughs> yeah. Or, or the death penalty. I believe in redemption. I believe there's goodness in every heart. And if people are surrounded, are in the right environments, they're better angels come to the forefront. So uh, I don't even know how I got from point A to, to point B right now. What was the original question? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect, Guru Ganesha. The original question was, could you share a story that happened to you that you overcame your self-doubts, especially when it comes to an opportunity that showed up? Well, yeah, so, so that was a, a, an example. But at the same time, I don't want right. to fully negate the wisdom that I gained from my relationship with this individual. Right, right. But I cannot condone the abuse, the sexual abuse of my sisters and daughters. So I disembraced uh, myself from this notion of spiritual teacher. And just recognizing that the spiritual teacher is inside the heart of each person. Yes. And that there's a danger in putting any other human on a pedestal. Totally. Totally, because they say uh, power corrupts and absolute power absolutely corrupts people. And most and, importantly, yes, don't put yourself on a pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And exactly like you're saying, Guru Ganesha, part of me also acknowledged that if I were to become a yoga teacher or even a successful one or even a popular yoga teacher, that I wouldn't want to abuse that power. So because of that, even I have taught zero class, literally, I'm still doing the training, but maybe this is who I am or the younger generation nowadays, just like thinking too much. I'm still like, you know, like 0.0, I haven't even you know, step outside on the court yet, already think about what we're going to happen when we win the championship, you know, like something like that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but maybe it's part of self-aware and aware of the infinity, but um, I guess all I can do is just do my inner work and uh, keep walking down this path and at least explore it. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, uh, what what I mean by if happens win the championship, then then I guess till that point we'll find out, right? But um, I'm still curious to try. Well, so. I'd say see yourself as a facilitator, <laughs> as opposed to a spiritual teacher, which can lead right. to a spiritual ego. You know, that's true. People ask me, do you still teach yoga? Well, occasionally I will facilitate some yoga if somebody asks me to facilitate or facilitate a meditation, but I'm merely a facilitator and I'm just sharing. I'll only share what I've applied to myself and have had a positive result. And I'll say, I can't promise anything from this. I'm happy to facilitate a short meditation or a short set of yoga. You judge for yourself. I'm not going to make any false claims that I can't back up scientifically. Hmm. I'll just share with you what helps me feel more peaceful and loving. Beyond that, it's up to you.
and your inner GPS, because you have fully, fully equipped with the best GPS system of all. That is true. We will have the intuition. We'll have the inner voice, right? The sixth sense. Yeah, but, but people get feeling. intoxicated sitting on the pedestal. Uh, oh, I'm a, I'm a higher. No, as the Tao would say, best be lower. Than right. Higher. Right. Exactly. And um, under understand. Yes. The most important part of that is under. Yes. Stand under. Lift up. Yes. Yes. Precisely because the Tao says that um, success and fail, success and and failure, is that really that important? The whole world seems to want success, but I alone knows nothing. I alone drift around in the wind, like a leaves, and I alone like a fool. Then my mind is so empty. And success and failure are they really the polar opposites? Because the Tao says that going, it's like success, like. In a way, it's like climbing a ladder, right? It's whether you're going up or you're coming down. It's when you're moving is equally shaky, and exactly like you're saying, Guru Ganesha is this ever forever changing, right? The position and the highs and lows, and it's like a coin, right? Two sides yeah. of the same coin, but it's just one coin. And when you flip it, it's spinning. <laughs> yes, that's true. The possibility. Right, the yeah. the, in, the infinite. They could land face up or face down, you know. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but yeah, I've really been fascinated by the Tao of late. Oh wow! I wasn't that wow. that aware of it, but I and the teachings are quite relaxing and peace producing, and you know, helps me to relax. And not strive as much, and be more. Just instead of being a human doing, be a human being. That's true. That's true. And myself also find that sometimes, maybe in the past, that I would rush to make a decision, and nowadays a lot of time. If the time allows, I would just sit back and relax, meditate, go shower, take a nap, have a coffee, tea, and then when I'm much more relaxed, and then the amazing idea will actually come when I'm on that state, yeah. right, which is incredible, and it's better than me uh, in the past was stressing for like two hours, and then I'm like there doing yoga or just laying down, and then the idea came. <laughs> So, yeah, stillness can bring clarity. Totally. Even totally. even brief stillness can bring clarity. Even a Absolutely. minute of stillness where where you're seeing yourself as just like right now I'm just feeling trillions of cells vibrating. That's basically what I am. I am is just trillions of cells vibrating. It's kind of miraculous that we we're each trillions of cells vibrating, but we can actually share love, communicate, you know, and, and my better angels inspire your better angels and your better angels inspire my better angels. And we're going, we're moving in a very good direction, beloved nephew. Indeed. I really. And in fact, we're that. already there. <laughs> yeah. There's peace today. There's peace today. And I'm praying. I'm praying. And knowing. It's our destiny. I really believe it. I can't prove it, but I, I believe that we're quite a an amazing experiment, eight billion of us on on a on a, a planet that's spinning through the solar system. It's just phenomenal. Yes, absolutely. And Gruganesha, just now when you're saying that you feel it and 
this is actually something that I have heard about a long time ago, and it suddenly just came in my mind that which is literally from a elemental perspective that humans are like. What we are made of are like carbon, oxygen, iron, which were actually created inside the stars as well. Because when stars, uh, stars exploded as supernova in the past, and these same elements spread across the universe, right? So eventually they came together to form our planet and all living being, including the plants, the table, <laughs> and us as well, right? So in a way, we are made of stardust. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, and and nobody can explain when consciousness manifested. You know, nobody. And I'm 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 kind of tired of the uh, um, quote spiritual teachers out there claiming they know about things that are profoundly unknowable. <laughs> You know, and I think it's fun to philosophize about everything. And, uh, but uh, trying to force others to believe what you believe or to live the way you think they should live is profoundly out of harmony. Absolutely. And is if I may use a slightly hectic word, is dangerous. It's dangerous for uh, that person and also dangerous for the other because that's um, if such person, they claim that their way is the way that is actually extremely ignorant because every single person, their situation and their environment is extremely complex. There's not really, I mean, maybe moral guidance of like, Exactly like you said just now, Guruganesha, like do no harm, right? Like things like that. Treat eat, treat the golden rule, treat other people how you like to be treated. But other than that, if talking about specific life path, like not everybody, you know, I mean, I think everybody should appreciate music, but not everybody in theory could be a musician. Like I literally tried to learn like five instruments. But obviously, you know, I didn't start at eight when I was eight years old, right? But uh was exactly because I tried to learn an instrument and I found out that I love music so much, but that's probably not going to be my profession. I at least could till teach now. you. I could teach you. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, it's a very, it, uh, you're a musician and you're an artist. We, uh, each of us is. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, to develop an art, it's good to have a mentor. Yes. And, and a system that takes you step by step, you know. Because right. then the confidence comes. The only thing you lack right now is the confidence. Oh. But you love music, right? You love music. I, I love so much. I love I love music. I, uh, I should relate with what um, I was start learning guitar actually online with my with my friend um, because I was move. I just moved to Madrid. And although I didn't get a super ex expensive, amazing guitar for free, but I was like buying all the things from like secondhand website, I got a decent guitar for like 10 euros, right? Which is like, wow, amazing. And uh, I found out about this song called uh, Wicked Game. Wicked Game, no, I don't know. Wicked, Wicked Game, oh, Gruganesh, I gotta send it to you. It's like similar to you, like hearing the, the Beatles at the time, right? I was like, wow, it's this lyric. Yeah, I, like I will. I will, I will. I, maybe you can even play that, uh, you know, at the band. But uh, it's like I heard that song. I was like, wow, the lyrics and the tune is so sexy. If I learn this and uh, if I play on the street, it's going to be like, oh, they're going to get so much love. <laughs> so, well, you know, if you come yeah. to Washington, D.C. area near where I live, come and stay with us a, a few days. I give you a long lesson and show you a system how to – and. Uh, You'll be amazed. Yes, please. I I plan to go there maybe next spring, the next summer, the latest. Well, let so. me give me a little notice. Yes. And you'll come. We'll make you a nice meal. We'll sit upstairs and right here in this room. I mean, look at Amazing. all the Amazing. Wow. See. wow. see the guitars are everywhere. Yeah, I see. I see. Nice. Amplifiers. 
Nice. And uh, yes. I give you a very simple system to so you can grow into it. And of course, you don't have to, you know, but don't don't give up on your capacity yet. You love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I really love it so much. Actually, also, um, this is something another. So exactly the yoga studio that where I'm doing the yoga teacher training at on Saturday, there's this um, a little bit longer class is one and a half, one hour, 25 minutes, more or less. And after that, there's a 30 minutes uh, meditation or chanting uh, opportunity. People want to stay. They can stay there. And maybe till a couple months ago, there uh, was an Argentinian girl. She plays the, don't quote me on that. It's like, it's like the one use, it's like a box, but kind of like a piano. Is that, what's it called? Um, oh, harmonium? Harmonium? Yeah, harmonium. Yeah, yeah. No. So, she, so she she used that and then she left. She no, long, no longer lives in Barcelona, right? Which is now there's this 30 minutes of uh, obviously you can still chant without any instruments, right? But I was thinking in a parallel universe, I can play a couple songs of mantra songs on the guitar and I will be there. You know, obviously I don't have to, but I would love to do that. It's like perfect. Harmonium is a good instrument too because you yeah. you play along with your voice and it provides a, uh, you know, a lot of overtones that, right. that helps Indeed. it. So when you sing... You sound better because the overtones, and it also helps okay. you to sing better. So oh, a lot of people start their yeah. chanting, uh, learning yeah, how yeah. to using yeah. a harmonium and just matching the exact notes that you're singing with the right. harmonium. Right, right, right. And I have a harmonium in the house too. Oh, nice! I Incredible. can teach you how to use that. I'm well, Gruganesh. I'm I'm coming. You have um, a musical soul. I already know that. Thank you. Thank you. I've Actually, been teaching my 19 year old daughter, uh, granddaughter guitar right. and she's learning fast. And yeah. She's nice. realizing, Oh, she could do it. She didn't wow. think she wanted to do it, but didn't think she was musical, but she's yeah. musical. Yeah. 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 Well, this is incredible. Well, maybe quite like music one oh one um, questions. So, but when you're singing, let's say sing a mantra, when you're playing the guitar, that note is the the note you are singing and the note you're playing on the guitar um, sometimes or a lot of time is different. Well, with the guitar, oh. and you could do this with the harmonium too. A lot of times I accompany myself with what are called chords where you oh, play right. three or four notes together. Right. And Western music is very chordal, mm -hmm. whereas Eastern music is very modal, you know. Right. And I've right. studied both. And, yeah. and and they and it enhances your vocabulary to understand both. Right, right. And then I've merged them together. If you listen to some of my music, there's a blend of East and West. It's quite interesting, you know. Totally, 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 totally. There's a track on I think on my album called Kundalini Sergi called Odd Such. Odd such. Uh, now I'm trying to think Odd Such if that's on. Um, could be on Kundalini Surge or it could be on Joyous Now. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, the melody is classical, Indian Raga. <laughs> but then I put Western chords to it. Right. It, and there's a lot of young people in India now that are listening to this and they love it. They love, oh, wow, because they, they haven't heard music with chords. And, but the two together is very interesting. Maybe some of the purists are upset at me for doing it, but <laughs> they haven't sent assassins to get me yet. <laughs> it won't, Guru Ganesha. They no, won't. They'll, so. they'll be writing a love letters, be like, wow, it's so great. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But yeah. uh, fun. It's always fun talking to you. I feel uplifted whenever I talk to you. Likewise, likewise, Guru Ganesha. I know, uh, I know. Today you had quite a quite a busy schedule, but you, within no time, we'll be doing another episode. So yeah, my rehearsal starts in a half hour. Yes, yes, but I'm absolutely. Already, I warm my voice up already. So nice, 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 nice. Are you when you're doing rehearsal? Are you uh, um, heading out of house to to do it to no, all together? Is, or, yeah, oh, nice. My bandmate come here. Okay. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. But yeah, that sounds great. Because I'm the oldest one, so the younger ones do the movement, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, you're you know you're the it's like gravity, right? You know, you're you're grounded, and then if I have a lot of good toys here that they enjoy. Totally, you know, totally, totally. <laughs> yes. I actually uh, also want to acknowledge you and shout out. Thank you so much for putting me in touch with uh, Manuam. And uh, oh, did, uh, he's a he's a very very beautiful man, huh? He is. He's he's incredible. And and I was going through YouTube and I saw a video or YouTube are playing in. Uh, it's like it's kind of like live, and it seems like YouTube record that was it at your house. Guru Ganesha, I mean, and I think it was at a yoga center near here at the at okay. uh, called Beloved in right. Reston, Virginia, right, and right. they have a, a Beloved Yoga Sanctuary, but they have a special room that I I I help them with called the Listening Room, where they do concerts and live music. But oh, nice. he came to play a concert there, and uh, he messaged me that he was in town, so I went there, and before the concert, we just we jammed out front and had some food to get where, you know, we don't see yeah. each other often, but we have great yeah. respect and love and appreciation for each other. Yes. He's doing very beautiful work with mantra and festivals. He's organizing festivals. Absolutely. Absolutely. By the way, uh, you're in a, you're in a, one of the capitals of chanting in all of Europe is Barcelona. Right. As I, I'm surprised because uh, I used to live in LA and I think like, oh, the yoga scene there. And then, but still come to Barcelona, I'm surprised there is in theory, um, maybe people could quote on me on that, but I think there's probably more yoga to do here in Barcelona than even in Los Angeles. And on top of that, the yoga events, the retreats here in Barcelona or in Catalonia, it just, wow, it's incredible. Really, yeah, really. When Sanatam and I came to Europe, uh, for the first few times during, you know, 2006, 2008, right. 2009, 2010. We did concerts each time in Barcelona and had the, the largest, most enthusiastic audiences chanting. The first yeah. one we did was in this beautiful cathedral, very high ceiling and, and a beautiful kind of echo delay, but natural from the high ceilings. Right. And there were, there were almost a thousand people came to that concert and everybody, wow. we all sang together. Yes. And that's where we realized, wow, we're, we're not performing. This is a co-formance, not a performance. Right, right, right. And we were just kind of the facilitators facilitating all thousand of us to sing together. Wow, is that open hearts. Right. You're going to have the most shut down heart on the planet. And you can't keep it shut down with a thousand people chanting from their hearts with love. Absolutely. And and also thanks to you as well for putting me in touch with uh, Sanatam and her crew. I got to volunteer and meet them both in Madrid and in Barcelona. It was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have been a lovely evening, huh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me yeah, and absolutely. I did many, maybe seven, eight hundred concerts together. And then I got a little bit too old for all the travel, you know. And well, now she has a great band with her. Did you meet Ramdas? Yes. And uh, Greco. Greco, indeed. Beautiful guitar player. Ramdas yes. uh, sings beautiful harmony, plays clarinet, piano, guitar. Yes. And yes. then Sukmani on the tabla. It's incredible that, yeah, like the whole, the whole band, really, like everybody is so nice and um, it's good to listen to their music and be there and talk with them for a little bit. Really is incredible. Do people yeah. sing along? Yes. Yes, totally. Totally. Oh, good. Yes. Oh, good. yes. So yes, Mani, yes. you know, is, uh, 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 she's from the UK, from the <laughs> London area, and her yeah. family is of uh, 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 Punjabi Sikh ancestry. And so she studied classical Indian raga. She has right. all the beautiful uh, tals she knows, you know. Yes. On yes. the tablas. Yes. And she's yes. using other other percussion instruments now too. Yes, 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 yes. And Absolutely. Sinatam loved that. She always wanted classical she wanted tablas with her music, you know. Right. I was wanting drums and you know, cajones and but yeah, she wanted to cajon. keep the purity of it. 
So True. Uh, she finally yeah. found her soulmate in uh, Sukmani on the tablas. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's really incredible to meet all of them and um, be there and um, yeah, to know more of the community. Really, it's great. And yet, however, Guru Ganesha, I got to make my way out there to the East Coast and, and you as well. And um, yeah, one of my goals to... No, 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 no. I, it's, yeah. it, put it on your bucket list to come visit your uncle here. Totally, and, totally. Uh, it's very nice here, very pleasant. Yes. We could sit out back yeah. and play a little music to the trees. Totally, and, uh, totally. Yes, yes. We make I want some that. beautiful food. I can cook, you know. Absolutely, yes. which is actually <laughs> quite interesting. As uh, uh, not actually very few people know, but uh, I'm quite familiar with the DMV area because I actually uh, went to school in Maryland for four years for uni. Which school? Um, it's such a small school is Washington College um, on the Eastern Shore. I know Washington College, wonderful. Yeah, so lovely people there. So, so, so we're like, so we're actually, I mean, wouldn't say exactly neighbors, but we're super close, even from oh, like yeah. from ten years ago, even. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. Might yeah. Just come back for your reunion, you know, and then come totally. stay with me. Totally, totally, totally. That's a goal. So you love my wife too. She's a woman that, of pure that would heart. Be, pure that would heart. Be, that would, that would be amazing. Mata Mandarkar means temple of the mother. Oh, wow. And she wow, really wow, is wow. the temple of the mother, the love that she has for everyone, yes. for children, grandchildren. And yes, yes. It's a yes. beautiful experience, you know. Yes. I'm blessed every day. Yes. That's amazing. Also, I remember I'm yet to for you or for you two to together to share more about the story of how you two came together as well. I think, I believe it last, last time or second last episode, we briefly touched base on that, but I know you got to run Guru Ganesha. No, so sorry. we'll hit that one in our next podcast, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I still got a couple questions. So, you know, uh, definitely. Um, well, thank you so much for your time, Guru Ganesha. Such a blessing, such a pleasure as always. I feel full for the day now. You filled me. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I, th I think really my work is, or my gift, my dharma is something along the line with speaking or connecting with people. I really, it's, um, I'm still yet, yet, yet to explore it. Uh, I am exploring every day and yet I'm super excited about it. So, yes. Just, just yes. continue doing exactly what you're doing, man. It's perfect. I'm so happy you're learning and you're going to be sharing yoga with people. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. I'll keep you posted how it goes. And uh, yeah, now I'm quite courageous. I'm gonna just write the studio owner and then go take on tr take this community class and show show them and see how it goes. Next time so, yeah. we talk, you'll share with me your favorite asanas, your favorite postures, and why they're your favorite postures, and how you feel the flow of your energy when you're when you're doing your yoga, you know, and how you're you're your best healer. Absolutely. I feel myself every day. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm feeling very grateful to be j turning 74 later this month, but feeling very, very healthy. Yeah. I did my yoga this morning before because oh. I wanted to be in a good space. So Totally, totally. You're in a great space, Guru Ganesh, and you, and you look great. I, I feel you. great as well talking to you. I feel the energy, the youth, right? Like really, you know, and then, yeah. Yes, totally. uh, yes, uh, we we have the capacity. I mean, there in India, there are people well into their hundreds practicing yoga. I met a gentleman who was 118. Right, and he seems right. so youthful. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm reading this. I'm reading this book, uh, Light on Yoga by Ayinga, and like the the poses he. Not only the poses, but like his spirit from the from the pictures, it just like incredible. It's like wow, like. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, yeah. you know, the, the greatest healer is joy. Totally, totally. And joy is now. Joy is now. <laughs> Love you, beloved nephew. Thank you Love so you. much for giving me the opportunity to be with you and your network. I send love to all out there. <laughs>